Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're looking at an art package on the iPad, actually. Uh, there's a program called Affinity Designer. It's available for Mac and Windows, and it is absolutely one of my favorite purchases ever. It was 60 bucks, thereabouts USD. And this is a vector graphics package along the same lines as Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. And there's reasons to use Illustrator and there's reasons to use Inkscape and there's reasons not to use both of them. And frankly, I found so many reasons on the not to use both of them category that when I found another tool in this segment that fit me like a glove, I just ran with it and I have not had a single regret since. Now, Affinity Designer is actually one of those applications I use daily. I do all of my title graphics in it, such as the graphic you see for this particular example. So when a mobile version came along, I decided to jump on it. Now, there's nothing wrong with Inkscape if you like Inkscape. It's free, it's open source, and great for you. I didn't particularly like it. I don't like the user interface. I don't find it performs well. I don't like working in it. So I would gladly spend $60 on a tool I like more. You may not fit that bill, or you may be a diehard Photoshop guy or Adobe guy. You're fine with paying your $40 a month or whatever it is these days. You like the way their tools work. I find them overly complicated and way beyond what I need to do. So Affinity Designer perfectly fit that niche between you know a high-end power Power tool and a free tool with a questionable user interface. It was a great polished tool that did exactly what I needed it to do. I actually did a video on Affinity Designer some time back when I first got it. I didn't know it as well as I do now, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Affinity Designer, I will throw that down below. Now, if you head on over to their webpage, it's made by a company called Serif. Uh, they make this. They also make a um, a photo version or a paint kind of package and a publisher version coming soon. But right now what we're focusing on is Affinity Designer right here. So you can see we've got a desktop and an iPad version. So when they brought out the iPad version like a couple of days ago, it was 20 bucks and I have an iPad, uh, horrific, Apple branding. I think it's called the new iPad, which is stupid naming because there's newer ones since. I think we can call it an iPad 4. So my iPad by no means, it's not a pro. It's not the fastest version out there, but it is not the um, slowest model by any means either. And here it is running via reflector. So here you can see basically what we are dealing with. And this is actually the exact same file as on the desktop. So let me just pop this full screen so you can see what we're dealing with here. So this is, again, you're gonna see a little performance like because I'm running this screen capture over Wi-Fi to my machine. But even still, you can see pinch in, it just, it's just amazingly nice performance. Same with zooming, two fingers to pan around. I can zoom in really far. And again, you see the performance on the new iPad uh, is actually quite solid. Uh, the performance in this thing has been just really great. I'm actually shocked at how well it works. And sometimes I just want to kick back on the couch and do a little bit of work. I don't need a laptop to do it. And the awesome thing is since this thing syncs in through Dropbox or Apple's ecosystem, which I don't touch, you can easily work on the same file. So once again, this guy is open directly from my Dropbox and is the exact same file as Oh, we're in full screen. Let me just get out of full screen mode so we can show you that. This is exactly the same file. I'm actually shocked that it allows me to open it twice at the same time. But you'll notice here in the desktop version, you've got your various different drawing instruments down the side of the screen here. And then your kind of effects and brushes, etc., are in panels on the right. Now let's head on back over to the iPad version and you will find it's a very similar layout, but they've just done such a polished job of it. So let me just click away from that. So here we are again. So you saw the pinch in out to zoom, two finger to pan around your drawing surface. Um, let me just get us a new drawing now so that I'm not messing with this one. So click the arrow, the top left corner, and we'll click the uh, plus icon down here. So we'll create a new drawing. And here you see you can create it in the cloud or you can import it from your folder. You can create a new project, but I'm just gonna go to the top left corner, create a new document. I'll go with the standards, but you see you've got various different predefines. You can go in, you can work in uh, points in pixels, inches, feet, yards, etc. You can optimize for various different devices, but I'm gonna stick with this one with whatever resolution they're suggesting for me. Go ahead and create a new document. And here we are. So down on the left-hand side here, you've got your move tools, uh, your cornering tools, etc. Here's a straight pencil tool. So let's go ahead and select that. And then as you see, you can just draw accordingly. This is drawing, um, this is all vector based. So you're drawing, your strokes are all uh, vector drawn strokes. So now I can go back to one of these two tools. Uh, this one here being the uh, node tool, this one here being the move tool, and we can use that to move things around. You see there's a little handle at the top here for rotating. I can grab any corner and scale. 
like so, or I could grab the rotate tool and rotate the entire thing. Or we can switch over to this guy right here, which puts us into like point editing mode. And you'll notice once I've selected that down here, your on the fly tools are shown up down there. Um, there's also a little arrow to the right that I just clicked on. Uh, now here's the left to minimize it. It brings back and gives you additional options for your tool set. Uh, I'll go back to the minimalist version. Uh, but now what I can do is I can say switch into um, smart cornering mode like that. Click that guy right there and then just grab a corner and you'll see it would automatically convert into a smart corner. Otherwise, we can grab things by the bezier handles and create them accordingly. We can grab the end point, so we should be able to close that off if we wanted. So that is kind of essentially the um, the basics of vector drawing. You see there, I can use the delete to get rid of the last selected point. So I can go boom and keep deleting it out. So that is drawing with the pencil. We can get more into uh, this guy, which is basically drawing in vector shapes in real time. So I'm, oh wait, that's the vector brush. That one, sorry, the pen tool draws in vector shape as we draw, see we're drawing a filled surface. And at the bottom, you've got your various different options. I click there to close that off. So that's how easily you can freehand create your own shapes. Or we can do this guy, which is probably where a lot of artisty type people are gonna be working. That is basically your straight out vector brush. Now, so far I haven't shown you the right hand side. And that's where your various different settings are. That top guy is pretty predictable. That brings up your color settings. We can flip through the various different color options. But I'm gonna go back straight to the color wheel. We'll pick red. So now we're drawing in red. Why did you not select? Okay. And then you can click it again to minimize it down. So now you see at the bottom in the tool in stroke, it's there. We could also change it directly right there. The guy below the color selector right here, that is your brush tool. Click here at the advanced to get more details. This basically is defining how your stroke works, how to cap off the points, join it together. Um, you want to scale it, etc. We can also set the width of our stroke here. You'll notice this is corresponding to this guy down here where we can also set it on the fly. You just put your finger in there and you can easily change. It's a, it's a really nice touch interface they've gone with. Now to move down one more, this guy right here is your brushes, your different a default stroke. So if we want to do like acrylic, so we want to recreate like an acrylic workflow, we can go here, pick an acrylic drawing, and then paint accordingly. Now again, this is all vector based. So I can come here at any time and we can move the strokes around. Again, we can switch out the cornering mode, etc. So you've got a huge amount of control over how things went. Now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit from this guy straight down to this guy right here. And this is your history. And what you're seeing here is the tools are all non-destructive. Basically, you've got a history. So we can jump back in time at any point in our drawing segment and just move from there. It's kind of like an infinite undo. So this is a non-destructive workflow you're working with. And what amazes me is this guy is not chugging for memory. I can just keep drawing and drawing and drawing. The history keeps coming up and it never really slows down. Now, at any particular time, you can you can pin in any of these sidebar tools. I'm using toggling the icon to get them in and out. So if you use it all the time, you can pin it at the top. Or if you've got more screen real estate, if you're on one of the bigger iPads, you might want to leave it up all the time. All right. So that was that. Next up we have, um, so that was the brush we just did. Next one, we've got your layer settings here. Um, you can basically merge them up, merge them down. You've got special effects you can apply across each layer right here. So we can have it be a pass through a normal dark and multiply. You know, it's kind of like if you've worked with any layer based Photoshop, that's exactly what you're expecting to see. So those are your layering options. So obviously you can have multiple different layers going on. Here we've got um, assets. These are kind of uh, predefined icons that you can easily use in your, a lot of it's designed around if you're doing uh, UI mockups or something and you want to basically, you know, recreate uh, the look of iPhone user interface. You've got these to pre-draw with, or you've got a bunch of predefined icons that you can easily bring into the world. So there you see, and it is a vector. So we can switch here to scale mode and we can resize that guy accordingly. And then now with our little guy here in the scene, so that is your uh, icons come here. You've got symbols, it's empty right now, but I think that's kind of performs the same role. And effects, effects is where the real power is. This is where you can basically uh, apply special effects to a given object. So in this case, this little microphone we've currently got select, I'm gonna switch here, turn outline on. And then now at the bottom here, you can see I could outline, let's do the color to white. And then I'm just going to jack the radius up a bit. And you'll see in real time, the effect is applied. Pretty cool stuff. And we also say if we want to apply a blur, we go to the Gaussian blur, and then we can pick the amount. Maybe not necessarily exactly what we want to do in that particular case with the outline. Or we got a shadowing 3D. And the other cool thing is if you've got a fixed color thing, so if you brought in a... Uh, 
um, a black and white image or, or a completely white image. And when you want to colorize it, you could basically just do a straight out color overlay over top. Pick the color that you wish to apply, and you see there it is just changing the effect color of your surface. It's really useful, actually, when you're using uh, stock images, but you want to change the look and appeal of them. So the effects power is really, really cool in this guy. Then you've got here your various different adjustments you can make. So if you want to change the lighting level, you posterize it. You know, it, again, this is a lot like filters at global level in many other paint packages, but it's pretty impressive how many are here. And where this really shines, and this isn't going to be a lot useful for a lot of game developers, but for me, doing title screens, etc., the font support is awesome. First off, you got the ability back at the tools level to import any font you want. But what you can do here, you've got all your different layout options, uh, character and paragraph spacing, so you can really get fine-tuned control over how your font is drawn. And we'll go back over here. You look at the left-hand side right here. We've got two different font tools. So I'll click and touch. So there we've got a frame tool and an art tool. Now, art text is what you use most often, but if you wanted to frame text to fit within a shape, such as if you're doing vertical text or something, you can actually draw the frame of it, and then the text will automatically float to that frame. But the art tool, art text, is just so handy. Basically, you just come in, um, draw how big you want the character to be, uh, and then you can go ahead, pick the font, the function, etc. So if we wanted it to be uh, whatever font here, so din condensed, and then hello, like so. You see, I've got full access over there while I'm using it. And the font stuff, now I can like literally freehand change it. So if I want it to be wider or skewed, it just works. So it does a great, great job on font support. And you've got fine-tuned character control over how your characters are shown and positioned. So really, you have all of the functionality from the $60 version available here in the touch version in a very smooth, touch-friendly interface. It's, I'm kind of shocked at how well they managed to do things. Next up, we're in right here. We're in the transform tool. This is basically where you can do things like... Um, so here, let me go back, select my text. It, it'll illustrate well. And I don't want the keyboard up. So now we can do things like flip it. Like so, uh, position it, uh, we can pu push it down in the, the V order, or we can bring it forward and the Z, sorry, the Z order of it. So this is where you can fine tune your control. We already saw, oops, sorry, we saw this. We've also got a navigator. I don't see a lot of use for this one unless you're really zoomed in. So basically it's a top level view. So you can pop around, so you can move that little guy. Why are you not updating there? So you can see and move around within your within your selected shape. Uh, I don't really use that guy much. And that is kind of the gist of it. Over here, we've got the various different tools. We saw a lot of the paint brushes. This guy right here is for filling. So it's a visual way of drawing over for using gradients or color fills. At the same time, we have this one right here. This is basically the exact same thing, but it's for doing transparency. You'll see at the bottom, again, you have your settings available for that particular tool. Uh, any tool with a triangle below it, like this one right here has a pullout. So you can click it once and then again, and you get the various different options there. So there we can go ahead. Let's start with a basic shape. So we're gonna make a rectangle. And now let's draw the rectangle in our scene. Now what you're gonna see is since this is a vector-based graphics package, we can now go ahead and basically let's create another one like so. So now we have two rectangles in our scene. It could be any vector shape for the most part. Come up here to your menu options. So you see all your, um, your various different things that you would expect to be there. But what we wanna do, so we'll go to select. We'll select, all right, so which one? I want this guy right here. Add to selection, and then we'll select that guy. So we've selected both of those. So now what we can do is come back here to the dot, 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 uh, or right there, if you're following along, and you can do Boolean operations on them. So we could here say, add these two together, like so, and you will see we just created a compound shape from what we were just working with, and then you've got the various different points available in that newly created compound shape. Um, so normal vectors thing, so if we want, we can give it, you know, uh, corners and shapes, etc. Let's just shut that down. So your vector tools are very powerful. They're really well hidden in here and they're controlled via this guy. You know, your top level controls are right here for things like exporting, creating new canvas. You can turn snapping on and off. Snapping is pretty powerful. You see it's also controlled down here. So if you want snapping on, so snapping's on, and then I'll grab our guy right here. So as I'm moving him around the scene, so let's go into move mode and you'll see snapping lines show Oh, there we go. So you can see something. So there are the green ones for, and the red one shows you the middle of the screen. So you can use it to snap relative to other objects or to the screen itself. Pretty awesome. Then on top, finally, what we've got here is this guy right there. And this switches you into a bit of a pixel mode. So you can create a raster layer that works together. And then your tools down the side are your typical paint style tools. So we've got here a paintbrush. We've got an erase brush. 
We've got a pixel tool, we've got a smudge brush, and that is basically working on it like you're working in paint.net or Photoshop, those kind of programs. GIMP, that is kind of built in so you can do raster layers and vector layers together in the same package. Now, another thing that's pretty cool is you got this guy right down here, and we can click that guy at any time and get a quick definition of everything that is currently in the scene and what it does. So when you're first trying to figure out exactly how things work, there's pretty solid help there for you at any time. Just click that button and you are good to go. All right, that's it. This is, like I said, the, excuse me, the iPad version of um, the uh, Affinity Designer program. I am, again, a huge fan of Affinity Designer, so I'm impressed by how good of a job they did in the iPad version. And you don't need the desktop version to really take advantage of this. They're basically at feature parity, and they're both just about as quick to work with. I like using a keyboard and mouse personally a bit more, but when I'm just out wanting to do some tweaks or do a prototype or something, this is the perfect tool for it. And the nice thing is when you start working with, um, you know, so if you're gonna do layer effects or special effects on something, you get that real time preview. Same with when you're working with fonts, etc. You can see exactly what you're going to get as you're working on it. So it's got this nice, completely non-destructive workflow at any time time, you can go back and, you know, undo the damages you've done, or you can go forward, etc. And it just integrates nicely. And back here, it's not really much else to show. We've got the plus, the question mark icon up there as well, which will bring up the further help. And you'll see here, there's a pretty extensive manual built in. Uh, we got the settings over here. There's some pretty nice detail to the settings here is also where you can bring in fonts from externally. Um, yeah, otherwise you can create a new document or you can work with some of their existing ones. Now the cool thing is they've also got a bunch of samples you can bring in and download. So if we go on back here, I think if I go to the plus icon, I can do, no, that's not it. Where the hell did I get the samples from? Um, hmm. Anyways, there's a way to bring in a bunch of samples. I thought it was the plus. Ah, anyways, it, it, you can bring in a number of uh, predefined samples they've already done to get up going. Things like, uh, where did you go? I think this guy. This is one of the samples I imported. Oh no, this is a screenshot of the sample I imported. But you can really get in there and see how they used things and you know made their special effects. So here's one of the car examples. You can see how the layers sort of interact to make the end result. And again, the performance on this guy is just staggeringly good. I'm actually really quite impressed overall with this package. So I know, again, some of you probably think working on the iPad is anathema or that you're perfectly happy with your Inkscape or other open source or free or whatever uh, package out there. But in my case, I find the Affinity series to be just bang on. And sometimes I really just like working on a tablet, you know, and I love the fact that it's the same file support across devices. It integrates perfectly perfectly into Dropbox. So for example, once I loaded my Dropbox off, anytime I do a save, it automatically opens up and into my Dropbox, which again, I love. So that is Affinity Designer on the iPad, probably a little niche of a subject, but I was just so impressed by it having bought it that I figured I would do a quick video on it and share the results with you guys. So do you guys do any work on your iPad? Do you have you used Affinity Designer in the past or what vector package do you use? Are you happy with Inkscape or are you uh, an Adobe customer? We'd love to hear it down below. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.